beast. It's actually a riddle. Disobedient people don't understand Scripture. They don't have Yahushua's spirit in them because they don't obey him. And when you obey the commandments, Ten Commandments, there's a special sign that's mentioned. Yekeskel or Ezekiel chapter 20 comes up with it too. And this sign is a mark on us that other people can recognize. But more importantly, we recognize one another and Yahuwah recognizes us for this sign. He gave it to us as a sign forever. And he said so. A lot of you already know this sign, but it was changed. Anybody who changes his commandments is a wormwood weaver. Now they're out there eating wormwood, living on words that don't mean anything at all because they're men's words. There's a riddle, and a riddle withholds certain vital information that's necessary to solve the riddle. Scripture calls that vital information wisdom. Buying and selling is always brought up when Revelation 13 and the mark of the beast is discussed. Buying and selling. Well, the one buying and selling, which conduct, is the conducting of transactions, trading back and forth using currency or trading, and carrying stuff around, and, and give and exchanging, it's able to be done by those who have the mark of the beast anytime they want. Those having the beast mark are unrestricted to buy and sell any time they choose. Those having wisdom can solve the riddle at Revelation 13 because they know to obey the eternal covenant. There it is. Christians do not obey the eternal covenant therefore cannot discern the sign of the covenant. The weekly and annual Sabbaths, they're walking in darkness and fear, suspecting the mark of the beast has something to do with a form of currency or an implanted digital chip or something people accept that they will be condemned for by Yahuwah. Of course, Willful sin is always bad, and there's no forgiveness for willful sin. Read Hebrews chapter 10. But the, um, the sins that we don't know that we're committing, or unwillingly, uh, against his commandments, they're not our will that someone else is imposing. We're not guilty of those things. So if you're dead and somebody stuffs pig meat in your mouth, you're not doing that. Somebody else is doing that. Somebody else made that happen. Yahuwah already spoke of his Sabbath being the sign. And those disobedient to resting on his Sabbath should be cut off from his people. It's the death penalty, either now or then. We're not killing each other, of course. That's, that's against the commandments. But there was a time when the commandments were given in the wilderness when they would be stoned to death. They'd be held for, you know, trial. And then immediately their life would be taken if they were found guilty of breaking the Sabbath. The Sabbath is a sign forever between Yahuwah and his people. And it identifies us as living in the bond of his covenant, abiding in his word, living by every word that proceeds from the mouth of Yahuwah. And there's no, well, there are laws against it now to rest on the Sabbath because Constantine made that happen. Constantine's edict in 321 CE and the Council of Laodicea in the year, in or around the year 370 CE, and recently the breaking of the weekly identification which doesn't seem to have an origin by the lunar sabbathers lunar sabbath uh, using the moon to determine when weeks start and end and uh, they've, they've disrupted 
billions of people breaking the bond of the covenant. Now, the seventh day is referred to at Hebrews 4 as a sign. And for the people of Yahuwah, it remains. Read Hebrews 4. You can also look at another page on the internet. It's called fossilizedcustoms.com forward slash mark dot html. I'll put that on the bottom of the screen here for you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next exciting episode. Bye.